Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Tech with Yashwant. So in this video, let's have an understanding of Kafka's architecture. So Kafka's architecture isn't just a basic framework. It's a well thought out system that makes uh, the smooth transmission, storage and, and processing of the data possible. Let's take a closer look at Kafka's architecture. So as you can see on screen, this is the figure that I'm going to use to understand uh, the key components that make it a fundamental tool for uh, distributed uh, streaming applications. So uh, whether you are a developer looking for a comprehensive understanding or you're simply curious about how it all works. So this video with the exploration of the following components will definitely shed lights on how Kafka's architecture is organized and its crucial role in, in shaping the future of uh, data streaming. So if you observe case carefully on the uh, particular uh, diagram that you have, so I have you know articulated this in a way that you can understand everything uh, simple, right? So firstly, uh, if you observe uh, the screen here, we have a message, right? So now what are uh, these messages, right? So firstly, message make up the payload and they're also referred to as records. So if you have an understanding, messages are also called as records and they are sent as byte arrays and under the hood, they're typically grouped into batches before being sent. So these messages are by, uh, sent as part of our as, for, uh, as, as a byte array format, right? So that's very, very important for you to understand. So it's a byte array that's being sent. Now, who is responsible in sending these messages, right? So uh, if you observe this, I have marked it as two. And uh, if you see here, producers send the messages to the leader of the partition and select the partition themselves with the help of a partitioner in the topic right so that's the important thing that you need to know next the third important thing is it's a topic now what's a topic so topics are used to bundle messages of a business topic so they in, in comparison with your database it is nothing uh, or it is similar to the tables in your database so you can consider tables is equivalent to topics in the Kafka's ecosystem. So that's one thing that you can uh, remember. Now, uh, when I talk about topics, there are other things that you need to also know. So one is partitions. If you if you see this on the architectural diagram, I've uh, made a note of that as well. So partitions are the backbone of Kafka's performance. So they are the backbone because without them, uh, the entire Kafka ecosystem uh, is not going to work because the parallelism, the processing of, you know, uh, dividing the partitions and messaging messages are being sent. So all this parallel processing and scaling the processes is because of this partitions. So topics are being divided into partitions to parallelize and scale the processes. So to ensure fault tolerance and high availability, partitions are replicated across the brokers. Now we talked about partitions, we talked about topics. So do not worry, like we will touch base on all the concepts in depth in the coming chapters or in the coming videos. So uh, wait till the very end, right? Next, let's talk about consumers. So if you observe this, this part of uh, the architecture diagram is the consumer. So consumers are actually responsible to receive and process the messages from the Kafka. So consumers, uh, uh, are responsible to receive the data and to process the data as well, right? So that's their uh, important uh, you know, role. And uh, they can read from multiple partitions as well as from multiple topics. So they are reading from multiple partitions, if you observe here, and they can also read from multiple topics at the same time. So that's one of the important thing that you need to note. Next, uh, multiple consumers can be converted into consumer groups. So if you observe this, multiple consumers can be put into a group and you can call them as consumer groups. Now what these consumer groups are uh, being done, right? So consumer groups allow a parallel processing and scalable message consumption by dividing partitions and messages among the consumers. So if one of the consumer fails, let's say for any reasons, the others in the group uh, take over it tasks and it ensures 
uh, fault tolerance right so fault tolerance is being uh, considered so if any one of the consumer fails the other will take up the responsibility and it starts working on that right so that's the important thing next let's talk about broker so brokers play a critical role in the entire kafka architecture so they are the kafka servers and they share replicas and tasks evenly among themselves so which which eventually improves the performance of the kafka so if one broker fails for any reasons so another uh, takes over at and it, it increases the reliability of uh, the entire ecosystem right so that's important thing next uh, we talked about brokers when i talk about brokers so in brokers we have something called as leaders and followers okay so leaders and followers now let's understand what are leaders and what are followers right so So leaders are the brokers that are responsible for read and write operations of a partition. So this a leader is responsible for both read and write operations. So which is very crucial. So leaders are distributed evenly as possible among all the brokers that are present in the Kafka cluster. Next we have followers. So we we talked about leaders as well as followers. Now followers are the brokers to which partitions are copied from the leader to increase the res resilience so we have different partitions like we have multiple partitions and that will be copied into followers to maintain reliability of the entire system so for reliability thing we uh, have leader and follower concepts in the kafka ecosystem now let's do one thing let's uh, let's go and understand or let's dive into uh, and uh, by taking an example to explore how exactly kafka components work together right so let's take an example and see how uh, things can be understood now let's picture a scenario where a bank is handling fund transfer so imagine a bank here we have a bank right so it is responsible for uh, you know transferring uh, the funds so imagine a transfer application as a producer so this bank will have a transfer a fund transfer application so imagine that to be your producer right so this producer is responsible to generate message for each fund transfer so whenever there is a fund transfer these messages are being uh, sent as well and uh, these are like a packet of information and it contains uh, details like uh, the source bank account details right source bank account details uh, destination bank account details the time at which was the transaction made uh, the amount of fund that was transferred all, all this um, information is grouped together and you can you know call this as a record of information or a packet and this is being transferred so this is the information that a, a packet will have now these messages are not directly sent to the destination so this information is not directly sent to the destination so instead so they are directed to kafka topic let's call a topic uh, with the name you know bank transfer right so we will have a topic with the name called bank transfer uh, think of a topic as a category where uh, related messages are grouped together right so within this topic we will have multiple partitions so multiple partitions are present p1 p2 p3 p4 and so on right so this will uh, you know each partition handles a you know subset of messages and it will allow for parallel processing so in uh, in our case uh, partitions might manage uh, different types of or uh, groups of you know fund transfer so uh, next this kafka cluster is composed of many components and one of the important component which i mentioned was brokers so which is the backbone of this operation right so brokers are nothing but your servers uh, it will store and manage your data so they work together to form a resilient scalable kafka cluster so each broker oversees one or more partition for each topic ensuring efficient data distribution so that's one thing that you need to consider next uh, you know uh, let's also talk about consumers right so we have this uh, producers here and this is a message which are being sent and this is our uh, partition next for uh, uh, application or a service that is responsible for reading a message from kafka topic is 
consumer. We will have multiple consumer if you want. You can group them together and call them as consumer groups, right? So these are my consumers. So uh, what is uh, what is the responsibility of consumer? Uh, as I told you, so it is um, going to read efficiently and it's responsible for reading messages from the Kafka topic. And um, each group can have multiple consumers as I mentioned in the architectural overview. And each partition is consumed by only one consumer within a group. So a particular uh, partition is by being consumed by a single consumer, a particular consumer in, in an entire consumer group, right? So that is the important thing to note. So uh, the parallel processing ensures that, you know, messages are processed swiftly without any issues. So each partition has a leader broker and, and multiple followers. So the leader takes the charge of handling reads and writes. So while uh, your followers replicate the data for fault tolerance. So, so fault tolerance is one of the important thing when we talk about Kafka eco ecosystem. So you imagine if a leader fails, a follower steps in uh, to maintain a smooth flow of data, right? So now, uh, you know, to summarize or uh, to bring it all together as a fund transfer uh, message travels through Kafka, so they are efficiently processed by consumer groups, ensuring that accounts are up updated accurately in the timely fashion. And uh, the Kafka cluster uh, with its distributed architecture and fault tolerance mechanism forms uh, the backbone of this, uh, you know, reliable and scalable data flow. So uh, whether it's, you know, managing leaders, followers, you know, partitioning messages or coordinating brokers, so this Kafka orchestrates this symphony of data seamlessly. So in the coming videos, let's also explore Kafka topics and messages in detail. So that's all I had for this video where we discussed about the architecture of the Kafka along with an example. So if you're liking the video that I'm creating, please consider subscribing and share it with your friends. Thank you and I will see you in the next video.